Welcome back to another weekly UAS news update. This is week 37, and I've got five topics I wanna to cover this week. The first one is, guess who could face one year in prison and $30,000 in fine? Well, you'll find out in a second. We'll talk about DJI that is responding to the grounding of the entire fleet of drones for the Department of Interior. We'll talk about drone up. Drone up is becoming a lens provider. It's kind of exciting. One more option. And we'll talk about air map. That's unfortunately in the news again, not really for a good thing this time. And then last, I want to talk about the NPRM again, following last week's video and, um, and, and let's get to it. Let's get started. First thing this week, let's talk about the Super Bowl. You may have guessed it. Somebody get caught flying their drone over the Super Bowl TFR. I talked about it two weeks ago, so I guess this person isn't watching this channel. And um, person get caught and is facing one year in prison. And uh, it didn't say in the article that I read, but the FA had mentioned $30,000 in fine in the past for this kind of offense. So we'll find out what happens in the future. This is a 46 year old man from uh, somewhere in Florida. And, um, and he was charged with basically violating ATFR, temporary flight restriction. So the FBI said, and this was from the article, it hasn't been verified, that there were 77 drone incidents during that week before the Super Bowl and that four drones were seized in the process. Now, this makes me wonder one thing, which is, well, if they caught that many people and if they caught four drones, why is it that only one person is being charged right now? So something doesn't add up somewhere. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, don't fly your, your drone over, uh, well, over TFRs and other events. We've talked about this in the past. Be a responsible pilot. This one is kind of a big one. I've been talking about this pretty much since day one that I've been uh, recording these videos here. And this is DJI. The, the Department of Interior has decided to finally ground their entire fleet of drones, most of which are built in foreign countries, including China. And about 20% of these were uh, designed by or manufactured by DJI. So DJI kind of publicly responded to this and they defended themselves saying that, well, when this whole fiasco started, they created a government edition. They had this evaluated by the Department of Homeland Security and uh, that no data leak was found. Also, DJI says that a lot of the data that is, or not a lot, but some of the data that is being collected by the Department of Interior eventually ends up being available to the public. Hence, no real risk to be flying something, even if there was a, a risk of data leak. Uh, DJI goes on into the article kind of explaining what happens. They're saying that this is going to uh, basically be costing a lot more money to taxpayers because, well, drones can't be used anymore for a lot of the things that they were used in the past, which means that now the Department of Interior is going to be using airplane and helicopters, which are actually more expensive and also more risky to the personnel that's in the helicopter, for example. So um, not a good thing overall for the Department of Interior, and they themselves know about it. They've actually canceled some uh, training plans that they had for some of their employees to get their drone license. So this is not necessarily a good thing for the industry in general. Now, I know people are uh, going back and forth. The way I look at it personally, I'll tell you, um, if there was really a risk when this happened six months ago, almost a year ago, then if there was really a risk of data breach, then I would think that the government would shut it down immediately. But that's just me. So I think there's a lot of politics involved behind this, like everything else. Uh, involved with the government. So it is what it is. And um, I'll let you know if there is more information in the future. Next piece of news, Drone Up is becoming a lens provider. I've talked about Drone Up in the past. I think Drone Up is actually doing a great job at, uh, at getting their names out there and at growing the company very fast. Now, Drone Up, if you don't know who they are, they're the uh, industry leading drone service provider. And, uh, and they just became a lens provider. Now, Drone Up offers missions for pilots. If you're a pilot, you have a Part 107 and you want to uh, use your skills to make money, then Drone Up is a place where you can go and register as a pilot. And if there's a mission in your area and you match the skills, then Drone Up will match you with the, um, with the mission. Now, 
Drawnup has proven to be a, a pretty successful platform and somebody I think that has been supporting the community. So I'm um, kind of excited that they're getting into the lens business. Uh, it opens up and provides an additional uh, provider that people can choose from. Um, I've, so far I've been recommending uh, two of them. So I'm gonna be adding actually Drawnup to my list of provisor, providers that I recommend. And, um, and they're, uh, the system is available on Apple and on Android devices. So far from what I've tested, it's only available for part 107 pilots, but uh, it will be coming up in the future that they will be providing uh, Lance for hobbyists as well. So you just have to go to the app, submit your request like you do with everybody else, and then get approval through your cell phone. So that's it. Next thing, um, AirMap is in the news again this week because they are supporting the remote ID in PRM. If you watched the video last week that I made, and if you didn't, please, please, please go ahead and watch it. We're running out of time to submit comments. Uh, and get educated on what this NPRN can mean to you. The video that I made has 17 points that I disagree with that I think need to be uh, mentioned in your comments to the FAA. And, uh, and there are some big ticket items in there. Now, the, uh, the, the, the chairman of AirMap, Ben Marcus is his name, has gone publicly to say that the only way that drones right now can operate in the airspace with remote ID and with a, a UTM, an unmanned traffic network uh, management system, is via the internet. And we all know that, well, the internet is not available out there everywhere, so this is bound to fail uh, from the start. So with that being said, there was quite a bit of backlash, actually, if you go read the comments from this announcement from AirMap. I would recommend that you go and politely tell them that this is not something that is acceptable Acceptable, that the NPRM as is should not be supported and that um, and that it's going to actually create a lot of issues for a lot of people including the hobbyist community which uh, is going to be affected the most by this. The FAA says that there's only about 20% of the current um, hobbyist drones out there, or UAS I should say, that can be retrofitted to the uh, remote ID technology. That means that 80% of the people out there will have drones that they can't fly or that they have, again, not drones, UAS, that they can't fly or have to fly at an FA approved facility, which is just not fun. So um, again, go let AirMap know that this is not acceptable. And, uh, and I would say even go ahead and switch, switch to a different provider if you're using AirMap and let them know with your vote. Last thing, NPRM, just mentioned it. Please, please, please leave your comments. Please go ahead and read the, uh, the guide that we wrote. It's a pretty lengthy guide. Actually, I would go as far as saying that this is probably the most in-depth analysis of the NPRM available right now on the internet. And, uh, and I'm proud of this because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to give you all the information that you could so you could make a, an educated decision. I have a lot of solutions in there as well for every single problem that I bring up, I have a solution. I invite you to read it, make up your own mind, and then write a comment. We have 24 days to submit this, uh, these comments to the FA. There's about 8,000 comments right now. We need to get a lot higher than this. Uh, we have a much bigger community than even 10,000 people. So um, go out there, submit it, watch it, sit down for, it's about, I would say sit down for about an hour and then, and then just focus on this issue. And uh, please, please, I, I hear people say, I, I'm not gonna comment because it's not gonna make a difference. Sure enough, if you don't comment, it is not gonna make a difference. Please go ahead and comment. The FA has to review all the comments and respond to them. And, um, and we need to let the FA know that there is a community out there that's not just gonna take it and, uh, and is not happy about what is being proposed, all right? Last thing, swag. You are seeing this new shirt. I just got it actually yesterday. So I wanted to wear it on camera. This is not gonna be my usual shirt for these news updates. I'm gonna go back to my regular one, but I think this is a fun one, fun looking one. So uh, these are actually available now. Uh, I'm gonna put a link down in the description if you wanna buy them. I know a lot of people have been asking last couple of weeks since I wore uh, some uh, different versions, okay? Um, there's currently three different shirts you can get, the regular tee, uh, the premium tee, this is the premium t-shirt right here, and then a long sleeve tee, which I wore uh, two weeks ago. You're gonna say, what's the difference between the regular and the premium? I bought both of them to try them. The, uh, the premium is a little bit more loose, so a little larger on the shoulder. If you like it more tight, like actually I do, I prefer these, that's the premium t-shirt right here. 
And, um, and to celebrate this, I'm gonna have 10 shirts available that I'm gonna send to you guys wherever you are. And uh, if you just leave a comment down there and say that you want a shirt, the 10 first people that are gonna do this, um, I'll let you know how to claim your shirt. So uh, this one right here is the, um, this is the other one that's the, the blue one. There's different colors. This is just the blue, I like the blue one. And uh, this is the same shirt that I'm wearing, but in uh, regular format. So. These are for you guys, some swag, and uh, pretty excited about this. So that's all I have for this week. Please leave a comment, interact. Let me know if you submitted your comment. Uh, actually, what I would like to do is when you get this, if you haven't submitted a comment to the NPRM, when you get it, wear your shirt, give you some extra power, and uh, go ahead and submit your comment to the NPRM. All right, that's all I got. I'll see you guys next week. And uh, in the meantime, fly safe.